This is Spencer from the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Roger Ross Williams, the director of Life Animated, which is, it's not the premiere here at SIF, since you've been on tour already, mm -hmm. or is it the, the North American premiere? Or? No, we premiered at Sundance. Okay, so it's, it's playing here at SIF, we'll just leave it as a general term, um, which is a documentary about a family who has to deal with one of their children having autism and sort of understanding what that means and how they communicate with it and ultimately sort of the method that they find to really connect to their child is through Disney films. Um, I want to start just, I mean, with the general term or question, since I'm sure you get this asked a lot, but how did you get involved with this project? I mean, it's a really remarkable story and a really remarkable family, but it seems like it would be very difficult to find this kind of story unless you were either searching for it or you knew somebody connected to it maybe or... Um, well, so it's, this uh, started out as a book. It's a book by oh, Ron okay. Suskind called Life Animated, the same name. Uh, it's a best-selling book. Ron is a Pulitzer Prize-winning, best-selling author, author who's written um, many um, New York Times bestsellers. So, but he writes nonfiction bestsellers about presidents and about issues like terrorism and the financial crisis. And so this is a fairly dramatically different sort of... Well, area. this is the first book about his own son and his own family. So this is a very personal personal book. And I've known Ron for 15 years. Wow. We worked together. I used to be a journalist. I'm a recovering journalist. I <laughs> and um, I, we worked together um, at ABC. Okay, um, so I, you know, and I've done a number of pieces with um, Ron's and his family. I did a thing about um, Cornelia's, her, hit the, Ron's wife, mm. um, Owen's mother, um, and ha about her parents um, oh, for PBS. Um, I even worked on uh, Owen's bar mitzvah video for Ron as a favor. <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of the... You're well ingrained in Yeah, the I'm family. like the in-house documentarian for the Suskind family. So did that make it... Um, challenging or easier to sort of do a project like this because both sort of you are connected deeply to these people but at the same time you don't want to like create a project that seems completely um I, I mean not that it's not objective but something that is just really skewed in one direction that it really might sort of make it seem um less so not, yeah, less objective, I guess, is the bottom line. If well, you know, it's it's a story. You know, it's not an investigative piece. It's a story about a family, and it's a story about uh, about love and about the power of love in this family. And it's this coming of age story. Um, you know, that hits a lot of universal notes. Yeah. Um, so you know, for me. Um, I think knowing the family was was sort of how I got the sort of intimacy of of the story and how I got them to really sort of, you know, Cornelia's a very private person mm -hmm. and Ron's a very public person. Ron is always sort of on television and he makes speeches <laughs> and he's, you know, he's he's an in-demand in commencement um, uh, keynote speaker. And um, so he... But Cornelia is very private, and she often has said in a number of Q and A's and interviews, you know, that she no one else could have made the film with her. Do you think that allowed you to get uh, a level of maybe honesty from them that might not have been uh, available otherwise? And uh, also, like, do you think it made it easier for you to sort of record Owen, since you are a familiar presence with them, and not just some random person sort of lurking around him all the time? Absolutely. Um, you know, I already felt connected to the family, and um, so I think that connection was essential for me to um, to get the material both with Owen because his parents first have to trust me, you know, before they even allow me access to, sure. to Owen and his and his amazing, beautiful world. Do you think? I mean, I guess this sort of is an interesting line to draw, and one that I was wondering about while watching the movie. Um, specifically a scene after Owen's on his own. Um, was it hard to sort of balance the duties of filmmaker versus like family friend? Because there's a scene where he's looking for like his medication. I was like, he's alone here. Is there like a responsibility for the filmmakers to like step in and help out here? Like, where do you sort of draw that line between like, I'm trying to tell the story, but at the same time, I can't let something, you know, seriously bad potentially yeah. occur here. 
I think if there was something that was seriously dangerous, if um, you know, I would have stepped in. Um, you know, finding his medication, he eventually found it. Yeah. So it was it was, so it was, not ultimately it was not innocent. A big thing, yeah. Um, you know, if he had started a fire or something, that'd be a different story. Yeah. But um, uh, so you know, as a documentarian, you know, I'm there to document. So it, it is it is important to to know how to hold back, you know, and not mm -hmm. um, sort of insert yourself into the story unless it's absolutely necessary. Yeah. Um, so you, it's sort of a judgment call that you make as you're, as you're <laughs> shooting. But Tom Bergman, our um, DP, who's amazing and had um, a really great relationship with Owen and with the family, just sort of really sort of embedded himself in, in Owen's life. And, and also, Owen lives in the moment. So he was just mm. ignored the camera. He's in his own, you know, <laughs> Owen is in the world of the sidekicks in his head. So yeah. he doesn't, you know, he, Tom can be there shooting as Owen falls asleep and Owen will fall. And he was there that night when Owen woke up. And if, if like, if it was you, you or me or anyone um, who was typical, um, they may be sort of, you know, freaked out when they wake up and there's a camera over them. But Owen, didn't even look at the camera. That's amazing. Um, one of the really interesting things you do in the film is your use of animation. Uh, what was your thought process about approaching that? I mean, obviously animation is an important element of the story and how the family connects to Owen, but how was your sort of approach going into the film of like, okay, we're gonna sort of animate Owen's story within the movie and sort of animate various sort of elements to go along with that. Um, did you have a clear vision of how you wanted to do that beforehand? Was it something that sort of organically came as you were making the film? Um, what, what, what exactly was sort of the process with the animation within the film? Yeah. Um, so I, it was important. First of all, the, um, the animation is really that story is Owen's creation. Mm -hmm. So it, that's the last chapter of the book, mm -hmm. the, um, the story that Owen wrote. Owen identified with the sidekicks. Which in is Disney a beautiful anime. story. In yeah. And so it was really bringing his story to life. So I went to Paris to a company called McGuff because um, I, I loved. Oh, yeah, I did. I saw that in the credits. I really appreciate it. I love the work. They did Despicable Me and the oh, Lorax wow. and various huge um, animated films. And I and but I but I loved what the the work that the French were doing with two D mm -hmm. animation and I um, and when I met Philippe the guy who owns McGuff he was just such a character and so interesting and so creative I you know and he assembled an amazing him and um, Matthew and he assembled an amazing group of um, animators mm -hmm. um, Matthew Bertard leading that group and um, and it was um, uh, so I wanted the animation to be very different from Disney animation. Um, and we were going into a world that Owen created, so it had to be unique and special. Mm. And it was important that it was an experience, so there's no, not a lot of dialogue. It's, um, it's really um, a, a soundscape created um, by Dylan Stark, this amazing 23-year-old um, composer from Portland wow. who, I, who, who is a, pretty much a pretty much a genius and I and I um and but he uses the sounds of VHS tapes forwarding and fast forwarding mm. and he used, and he took Owen self talking and he turned that into a musical language. Yeah. So you are basically the the sound design which we did at the Skywalker Ranch um with um Al Nelson um as our sound designer and Pete Horner as our mixer who are who did like you know Jurassic World who are like you know in the Orson Welles mixing stage wow. um, which is this massive I mean I can't even tell you how, how what an amazing experience it is to yeah, be there you know the second day we're, we go to lunch and George Lucas is sitting there and you know it's just really great that's um, surreal yeah so uh, it was an, we just wanted I, you know I wanted to create this world um, that really took you inside the mind of Owen Susskind. One of the sort of fundamental questions I had with the production is sort of the use of the work of Disney within it. Obviously, that's a major element of the story. Was it challenging to sort of get Disney to agree to sort of let you use these pieces of their films. I know. I mean, it's a beautiful, sweet story, but at the end of the day, I know Disney is very protective over their characters and their presentation, stuff like that. Was that a challenge to get in a film like this, or 
were they really just on board once they heard what it was about? No, I mean, you know, uh, like any s- studio, of course, Disney is going to be, you know, very protective over their brand. Um, so it was a process. Uh, I met Sean Bailey, the um, president of Disney Productions, and he really ushered the project through the through the Disney sort of family and really um, made it happen. But it was a process that took, you know, took a took a, a while. Um, you know, they didn't have that editorial control over the film at all. Wow. They they were like, you know, this is this is an independent production and we respect that. We respect you as a director. But um and um you know I went and showed them clips and I should talk to them through the story and they and they um said um they were in tears. They were moved by Owen's story, and they were moved by that. Their the what they create, the 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 characters, the films they create could change a life. Yeah, it's I mean, it's a really profound message, and <laughs> really puts Disney in an even better light potentially. <laughs> um, they should use it as a selling piece. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the film is life animated. What is the sort of future for us? Is there a place people should go yeah. to keep tabs if they want to see it, which I recommend they do? Um, like, is there a website yeah. or a release schedule there's, or anything that you can share for that? Absolutely. So there's a website, lifeanimateddoc.com. They should Very go simple. there. Um, on the website, they can sign up for our newsletter. But there's also, it, we open in theaters in New York and L.A. on July 1st. We open, we go the next, on July 8th, wider. And um, in, here in Seattle, we open July 15th. Perfect. Um, so it's really important for to people to get out to the theaters and see the film um, and, you know, spread the word like yeah. you're doing here. Yeah. Um, because it's important that people understand that, that this is a film that that is a message in this film, and that is that people living with with autism have so much uh, such a, so much to offer us if we just listen and and not look the other way. Or just the the bottom line of like just because somebody is different than what you expect, that that doesn't mean there isn't a way that you can't communicate with them, or it's not worth trying to communicate with them. I mean, it's, absolutely. Like it's absolutely. it's a it's just a beautiful story. It's a very uplifting message. The Suskins like are phenomenal parents. Like they're phenomenal. Uh, I, like the kind of people you're like. I wish they were my parents. Like I love yeah. my parents, but even I'm like those I know. are some pretty. I know. They, and they're like the model model parents. Yeah. Like, they're, they're like, oh, why can't I be part of that film? Because because it's like a story about love. It's a story yeah. about the love of a family and the love the parents had the passion they have for their yeah. kid, that they that they found the pathway to him. Yeah. Thank you so much for making this film, Roger, and I wish you the best of luck as yes. it gets released from here. Oh, thank, thank you. you. can't stop me. I'm a fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm a fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm a fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to buy the same style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm a fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm a fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm a fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels all right.